I think we knew that Macron was going to win. Um, I don't think the French are yet ready for Brexit in the way that we were right. uh, last year in our country. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here, riding shotgun, hosting this hour is Paul Watson. Back by popular demand, he'll be hosting the fourth hour tomorrow as well. Look at that image behind me if you're a TV viewer. That is from French news agency. You probably faded onto the screen in front of us. You can really see it clearly. A big, giant black pyramid with an all-seeing eye right above his head, built by Francois Mitterrand, designed by the former French president, in homage to Lucifer. That is mainstream news. Luciferianism in your face in Paris, where the Jacobins and communism and all of the Illuminati systems come from. There it is in your face, ladies and gentlemen. Back to Paul Joseph Watson in London, England. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, we're going to go to a clip now. This is Nigel Farage, and he's explaining why... Marine Le Pen may need to ditch the National Front image to detoxify that whole brand and come back in five years' time with a better chance of winning the presidency. Here's Nigel Farage. Any surprise for you in the election of Macron? Uh, is there any surprise in the defeat uh, by 32 points of Marine Le Pen? No, I think we knew that Macron was going to win. Um, I don't think the French are yet ready for Brexit in the way that we were right. uh, last year in our country. Uh, maybe the one surprise is in the first round of this, 46.5% of voters opted for Eurosceptic candidates to the left, centre and right. Le Pen getting 35% tonight. Remarkably, 12% of those that turned up to vote despoiled their ballot papers mm -hmm. and put them in the box. And I've never seen anything like that happen a in a Western well. democracy. And I think the reason is, the reason I think is that the Front Nationale has a bad history. Her father, uh, you know, I, I, I'm afraid she's often judged by him. Um, and I've been urging her now, personally, for five years. And by the way, I've spoken to her campaign team tonight. Um, she doesn't intend to give up. What she needs to do is to get rid of that National Front brand, to start again, and then all the people of left and right could get round her in the second ballot next time round. And do you know something? I think what Macron will give is five more years of failure, five more years of uncontrolled immigration, five more years of failure with the Euro, and I believe Le Pen, if she steadies herself, can win this in 2022. That is Nigel Farage's take on the French election. Related to that, we have this story, France's National Front Party to change name after election loss. And again, the uh, Western media, the English-speaking media, always puts National Front because there was a party in the 70s and 80s in Britain, now defunct for 30 years, that was actually a right-wing racist party called the National Front. It's called Front National in France, but they always flip it around because they want people to associate it with a party that's been defunct for 30 years to smear and demonize it. So France's far-right National Front Party is gearing up for a name change, but not a makeover of its ideas after its decisive loss to centrist, centrist, far-leftist socialist bureaucrat, that's who he really is, Emmanuel Macron. In interviews Monday, the campaign director for Marine Le Pen, David Rashline, said the party founded by her father would get a new name as bait to pull in more supporters in France. So they're going to change the name, which is probably a good idea, would also be a good idea to co completely sever ties and prevent her father from having any kind of platform because he also uh, sticks, his, sticks his big mouth in everything, ruins it for everyone time and time again with his oafish comments. That needs to be clamped down on. But again, the question is, will there be anything worth rescuing in France in five years' time, given the situation that we've got right now? Hillary Clinton has come out and praised Macron. Headline, Hillary Clinton ties herself to Macron's victory over Le Pen, attacks the media. Clinton posted a tweet calling Macron's election a victory for the world and a defeat to the hackers who released Macron's emails to the public shortly before the election. Again, she still bought her over imaginary hackers, but then she turned the focus towards herself because she's a egomaniac, claiming, quote, the media says I can't talk about that. Clinton is known to have staffers carefully craft and edit her tweets before posting. 
She said it was vi victory for Macron, for France, for the EU and the world, defeat to those interfering with democracy. Oh, apart from if your name's Barack Obama, and then you can interfere with democracy on a regular basis. You can come out before Brexit and order the British people to vote for Remain, or they'd be at the back of the queue for a trade deal. Well, you're not overseeing that trade deal now, are you, Obama? And neither is Hillary Clinton. But she literally tweeted, it was a victory. It was a defeat, sorry, for those interfering with democracy. When Obama came out twice and interfered with this election by endorsing Macron. Most notably, of course, two days before the actual voting itself. Now, Hillary Clinton is whining about hackers. Oh, the hackers were defeated. Again, she still can't move beyond that lame, debunked narrative. Absolutely incredible. We'll be back. It's The Alex Jones Show Live. Don't go away. In ancient times, man roamed the earth in a constant state of hunting or being hunted. Introducing Caveman, where cutting edge science meets ancient super nutrients. Secure your bottle right now at InfoWarsStore.com.